So in this demo, I'm really going to be talking about InDesign um, page layout. Um, and I have a handout for you um, that really explains or lists all the things that I'm going to talk about. Um, so this is the list of the things that I'll be talking about. I've also included um, this basic workspace kind of snapshot for you. Um, and this is actually an illustrator, um, but it's the same no matter what program um, you're looking at. So um, it, the difference would be that it would just have the InDesign um, logo up at the top. So um, this section on the um, page layout sheet that I'm talking about, the workspace, all of these items you can see in, um, in this little screenshot here. So your application bar is what's on the top. So this is telling you what application or software you're actually using. The menu bar is this um, file edit object type. Um, and depending on what um, program you're in, there might be some others um, on here as well. And then this is the control panel. The control panel changes depending on what it is that you have selected. So if I'm selected on the T tool for text, then this control panel will change to some of the text options that you have available to you. So this changes depending on which tool you're actually selected on. Uh, down on this left side, this is the toolbar. So these are the tools that you'll be using. Sometimes, depending on how you have your setup, they could be in one row. Um, this is set up in two, which is how I leave mine. Um, at the bottom, this is your status bar. So it just shows what percentage are you viewing your document at. So you can click this arrow and you can change this to view at 200%. So it zooms in. Um, lots of options you can also just type in a number here this says that i'm on page one and you can click this down arrow and go to whatever page or artboard if you're an illustrator but for indesign it would be pages um, so this here is like your status bar um, off to the right side is a collapsed panel and when i get into indesign here you'll see um, what that looks like um, our panels are always set up over on the right side and we have the choice to set up our workspace the way we want. Up at the top here, you could see it says essentials for your workspace. I suggest working in essentials classic because it does give you a lot of the default um, things that you're gonna need, but there are some others that you can work in and you can also set up your own workspace and just name it with your name um, if you're working on your own computer and then it just you would just set it to your own workspace and it brings up whatever it is that you have so this is the basic workspace um, area so now i'm going to open indesign and i'm going to go over um, some some of these other items here so i always work in inches this is showing pikas um, I just got a new computer, so I haven't set the preferences yet. I usually set my preferences to inches, so it never gives me picas um, in the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and open this 11 by 17 document. And the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, rulers and guides. So for rulers and guides, um, I have rulers that are showing across the top and down the side. And if you go to... Um, hide rulers, you could very, very well be looking at this where there are no rulers. So to get your rulers to show, it's command R or view and rulers. So you could see command R is gonna show and hide the rulers. So that's a really good shortcut to know. I suggest you really start learning shortcuts because it does help you to move faster. So, um, in your rulers, I can drop a guide down. So I already have a margin, which I'm gonna talk about here in a minute, but um, I can drop, click hold in that ruler area and I just click hold and drag and I'm dragging down a guide. So if I want it to be at three inches, I would just drop it here. One of the things I want you to notice is that my pointer is outside of my page. So the ruler goes all the way across, even into the outside of my, um, my actual print area. If I bring it to the inside of the page, that ruler only shows within the page. 
So that's helpful, especially when you have multiple pages going. Um, if you wanted to go across both pages, then if you do it out into this area here, it's going to go across both pages. Um, and if you open your pages panel, this shows you that we only have one page here. So I'm going to go up to file document setup and I'm going to turn off facing pages. Um, and I'm actually going to change this to three pages and say, OK, so you can see that we have three single pages now. If I go back to document setup and go back to facing pages, what happens is you always have the single page. And later in InDesign, we'll talk about how to get rid of that. Um, but if you go to page two and three, I'm going to double click this. And what I was talking about is if I click only in this page, you can see that that guide only applies to the page that I'm on. But if I click over on the outside, it goes to both pages. So that can be helpful um, when you have multiple pages if you want that guide to go all the way across. And same thing for a vertical. I can also draw a guide um, this direction and drop it wherever I want so that I can line up elements um, if I if I needed to. So that's a great way to do um, your guides. And also you can go to, um, let's see your, let's see if I can find it real quick. Um, grids and guides. I'm trying to remember here what I'm, um, oh, I know what I was thinking. Um, I'm actually thinking of making a line and changing it to a guide. So like um, I was thinking about how like your from your rulers, you can only make vertical and horizontal um, guides. However, if I wanted to draw a guide that was at an angle, I can draw a line. And then um, if I come up to um, let's see if I can remember how to do this. It was, uh, let's see. I might have to come back to this because I should have looked before, but let's just see. Um, hide structure. I'm trying to remember. Hide frame. Mm -hmm. I'm not remembering, but I don't want to spend too much time on this right now. But when we get to that um, assignment, I'll make sure that I um, that I show you guys how to, how to um create that into a, convert it into a guide. So um, here's how you do those rulers and guides. This is your, va your basic toolbar. Um, and if you click the little arrow here, it changes it from a one column um, to a two column. So it just depends on how you want it to run. So the black arrow, this is selection tool, and you can see it has a V after it. And then this is direct select, which is an A. So if I select on my um, keyboard A, it's going to take me to the direct select, and V is going to go to the selection tool. So you can toggle back and forth between the V and the A. Um, so that's a really great shortcut to know. These are a little bit different. And the way that I can best explain this is just to pull a picture. So let's just pull a picture um, of a little puppy. Um, so let's just do this. Okay, let's just go ahead and drag this guy. Um, and for your pictures, um, I can even just drag this on here and um, it will drag it um, into your image. Or you can go to File, Place. Um, that's the other way. So I can go File, Place find my image, say open, and then two ways I can place it. I can just click and it clicks it at 100%, um, like whatever size it is, or I can click, hold, and drag, and I determine what size it is. So um, kind of nice to have that option. And of course, I can make it bigger. So if I'm selected on this with the black, so the selection tool, you'll notice that this outline is blue. If I go to my A, so now I'm on the direct select, and I click on it, 
it's red. So that's another way that you can tell which one you're selected on. And it does make a difference. I'm holding down Command Shift and I click, hold, and drag, and that's how you can make images larger and smaller. I can also come up here and make it larger and smaller here. I can say, um, let me make that 150% um, so it gets larger. So when you're selected on the selection tool, it's you have the whole image, so you're moving that image around. The, the one that's the A, the direct select, it's just that. You're direct selecting what's inside the box. And so I can move just the picture. So you can see that the box is still here, but I'm hiding some of that picture. Um, I can also just grab the picture and make the picture itself larger. It's starting to get fuzzy because I pulled this off on, um, from online, so it's not a very high resolution um, image as I keep making it bigger. Um, so selection tool, you move the whole image. Direct select, you just move what's inside um, that box, so that image itself. Okay, so um, those are those two. And then... Um, I'm going to follow what I have over here, um, but just to kind of lay out some of these, this is the type tool, and in InDesign, you don't just click, you have to click, hold, and drag, and this determines where your, your um, type is going to go. So um, in Illustrator, you just click and it makes a box, but in InDesign, you have to click, hold, and drag for where you want that text area. Um, to be. This is just a line tool and you can see that panel up here changes. So when I click on my text box, this is related to text. When I click on this, it's related to the line. So that's the line. This is a pen tool where I can just kind of draw um, whatever I want. Um, I can draw shapes and put my picture inside of it if I want to. Uh, this is the rectangle um, and the rectangle tool. Um, so rectangle frame tool, rectangle tool, scissors. Um, this is a gradient swatch. Um, we, I don't really use this note thing. There is a um, eyedropper tool that we use a lot. Um, so one has the little color theme. I don't usually use that. Um, that's kind of a newer one, probably in the last couple of years, but we do use the eyedropper tool quite a bit um, just to eyedropper a color. So if I wanted to pull the color, I could just eyedropper something on my image and it pulls that color. The hand tool allows you just to move around. So you could just move around your document. So when I hover over this, it tells you it's H. So anytime you wanted to go to the hand, you just click H on your keyboard and then you can kind of move it around. And that's really helpful when you're zoomed in really close. Um, you can always move this um, at the bottom or there's one on the side too. Um, or you just click on the hand and move it over. Um, and then you can go back to your selection tool or whatever it is you're doing. Obviously, we have a magnifier. And if I click, hold, and drag, it's going to be plus, um, depending on how you have your keyboard set up. If I drag down to the right, it goes bigger and to the um, top left, it's smaller. Um, and you can also see that there's a plus in the middle of the magnifier um, right now, and then there's a minus when I'm going out. I can also hit the option key. So if I don't hit anything, I just click, it's a plus. So it's magnifying in. If I click option, it changes the plus to a minus. So I can click um, and just uh, zoom out. Down below here, this we use a lot. Um, so if I wanted to make a colored section, let's say I just wanted to make a some kind of a rectangle, I have a swatches panel and there are default colors in here. Um, I can click on this and it's showing you that this is the fill. This is the same as this. So there's not one way to do things um, in any of these programs, but this is telling me that I have a pink fill and I have a black outline. So if I hit this little arrow, it swaps them. So now I have a black fill and a pink outline. And the pink outline's kind of small, but it's there, so you can see it. Um, so that's one way that you can do it. You could just swap them. Let's say that I wanted a pink square and no outline. What I would do is, right now the pink one's in the front. So if I want to affect the black one, so the stroke, 
so the stroke is the one that's just the outline, I click on it to move it to the front. And then over here in the swatches bar, I can just hit none. And you could see it took that off. Um, I can also put a different color on here. And then um, there's a strokes panel. I can make that stroke larger. Um, or I can just go back to my swatches and take that stroke off completely. So that's what this is. And if I were to um, switch this, it would basically say I have a pink stroke now and no fill. So I could put this over this box and you could see that you could see right through it. I wouldn't really want to put this box right on top of this and try and make that an outline. Um, it would be a lot better just to click on this picture and say, um, I want a black outline on that. So it should be one piece instead of, um, you know, trying to add an outline box on top of that other image. So that's what um, this section is. If you want to go back to your default, you just click this and it goes back to that black um, default. If um, I had text, so let's say that I'll just fill this. Um, here, let me just put hello in here. So let's say that um, I'm kind of messing with color of my images um, over here. And now I want to mess with um, the color of my text. Right now, if I click something, it's going to change the box um, because I'm clicked on the box. But I could click on the T, which means the text, not the formatting of the box itself. Um, now I'm going to affect the color of the font. So now you can see that it's affecting that. So that little T there um, will give you that effect. Um, okay, and then um, at the bottom here in this toolbar, there's normal view. So I'm going to zoom out. So Command-0 is zoom out. And notice here I'm at 36.55% because I have an 11 by 17 um, document here and I can't view that at 100% on my screen. So um, if I'm, I'm viewing it as normal, so if I click and hold, it shows me normal. And normal means that I can see all the margins, the guides, I can see things on the outside of my artboard. It's kind of like your working mode, but if you want to go to preview, um, then you're only looking at the artboard itself and those other things that I had out here, you can't see. They're still there, um, but you can't see them. So I can go back to normal view and you can see them again. But sometimes you just want to get a glimpse of what does that look like right now. Um, and you can go to presentation view, which actually makes it a lot larger and makes that background black. Um, so this is really nice when somebody's coming to look at your file, just so we can kind of see what it's, what you're, where you're at. Um, this is a good view. And then if you hit escape, it takes you back, um, to that other view that we, we already had. Um, so back to kind of that working mode, um, of normal. So here's our normal view. Um, okay, so, and then viewing actual size. So again, I can go to 100% down at the bottom, um, or I can go here to view actual size, um, just to kind of see like what size is my typeface? How does my image look? Um, also in InDesign, one of the things that it does is under view display performance, your computer's probably going to be under typical view and it makes your computer work faster. But if you go to um, high quality, it is going to tighten things up a little bit. So like, for example, this picture was not a really great example of this, but let's see if I um, make it a little bit smaller. I made it pretty large. So if I placed it at 100%, it would be better. But let's see if this works. So display performance. Oh, I'm already at, let me zoom out. Oh, I'm still too big. Let me replace this image at 100%. Oh, probably because it's 72 DPI. So let me make this smaller as if it was 300 DPI. And let's zoom in here. And let's see if this makes a difference. Oh, I'm still interesting. Um, so when you go to a fast view, this is what typically will happen. And it just makes your computer work a little bit faster. 
and then when you go to typical view, sometimes your image isn't gonna look crisp and clean, but when you go to high res, um, high quality, it's gonna clean it up a little bit. Um, I probably should have picked a high quality image so we could have seen that a little bit better. But if your computer's moving slow, you may wanna come back to typical view um, and just run it in that um, as you're working. That's gonna go a lot better. As far as your margins go, which is um, this kind of like pinky purple line that goes around, the margin is for um, breathing space for your text. So printers cannot print all the way to the edge. So if I wanted to bleed something off the edge, so let's say I wanted this picture to bleed off the edge, what that means is that my printer is either going to make a white border automatically or I have to print this on a larger paper and then trim. Um, that's the only way to get it all the way to the edge. The margin area is for your text. So your text, you do not want it to go beyond that margin area. And a typical size for a margin is a quarter inch. Um, you can go larger. I wouldn't recommend going too much smaller. Layout, margins, and columns is where you find um, is where you find your margin. So I have my margin set at a half an inch, which is what I prefer. Um, I just think having some space around your information um, really does help uh, for your eye to be able to go move around. So if you put this um, too close, so if I go to a quarter inch and I move this too close, um, it really, it doesn't help your eye. Let me make this a little bigger. And I'm holding command option and then the greater than symbol um, to get that to go larger, but I can also increase it here. Um, and I can do the click down and choose, or I can just type in whatever number. And if I go too big, it's gonna go outside the box. So now there's a red plus, which means, hey, you have something in here, but your box isn't big enough to show it. So you just expand the box and there it is. So this really does not give your eye much room to move around. So we get a little hung up there. So that's why, um, you know, you really wanna pay attention to your margins. Um, depending on what you're making, you may wanna go um, even bigger than half an inch. Um, but I would stay somewhere around there. Um, that's a good starting point anyway. Um, okay, so that is the margin. And then formatting text. So um, for text, let's go ahead and I'm just gonna fill this with some placeholder text. Edit, no, type insert placeholder okay so now we have some just placeholder text this is called lorem ipsum so it doesn't really say anything it's just filler kind of a pretend um, paragraph that we have in here so if i wanted to change my type i would select all so command a um, or i'm like i just click in here and hit command a or you can go to um, uh, object, no, um, it's under, well, where is it? I know I use the shortcut, but um, let's see, where is it? Hmm, I'm not finding it. I um, thought it was under edit. Oh yeah edit select all so you could see command a so i can hit that and it's going to select all of that you just have to be clicked in there um, if i'm clicked outside and i hit command a it's going to select all the components so if you just want the text you have to click in here so don't feel like you always have to go click on the text tool so if i'm on the selection tool i can actually just come down here and double click and it allows me to click in there. See, it just switched to the text tool. So I'm gonna select all, and then I can come up here and say, well, what font do I wanna change it to? Okay, I'm gonna change it to this font. I'm gonna make it a little smaller. Um, this only has a regular option. Some of them have more. So if I go to, let's say, Arial Narrow, um, it has other options. So I can change it to whatever option I want. So if I just change this, I change it to, to normal right now. Um, 
and then what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can just kind of take a look here at what we have. So this is just set as a default. And let's go open our character window. So if we go to Window, Type in Tables, Character. Um, I'm going to move my character window over here. I already have Paragraph open. Um, but this gives you that same kind of option as up here. Um, so this is the font size is 10 points. Um, the, this is called letting, which if you hover, it'll also tell you what it is. So the space between baselines. So whatever your point size is, right now it's 10, your letting should be at least two points larger. So I would never want to decrease this um, because this is too tight and it just does not feel good at all. Like if you zoom in, you'll notice that some of these descenders and the ascenders are almost touching. And in some fonts, they would be touching. Um, so you always wanna make sure your letting is at least two points larger. And sometimes you wanna open it up a little bit larger. So that's what the, the letting is. And then um, this here, if you hover, this will tell you it's kerning. So kerning is the space between letters. So that's really important because sometimes you might have um, some letters that are like touching and you want to open it up a little bit. So like you can you can see that it's kind of moving that um, over. Typically, I don't open up the letting um, on an entire paragraph. I don't usually do that. I didn't like that. Um, if you're going to open up all of it, it would be this, which is tracking. So if you hover, I'll see, you should tell us. Hello. It's, not, it's not doing it. But tracking's the same idea as letting, except let, um, tracking, or I'm sorry, kerning is the space between letters, and tracking is the space between the entire line. Um, so if you're trying to open up the space just overall, you're going to use um, the tracking and not the kerning. So kerning is between letters and tracking is like the entire thing. Um, I don't recommend using this. This is like vertically scaling your type. So like, for example, it basically makes it look stretched. So if I increase this, you could see it like stretches it. That's kind of annoying. If you don't like this font and you want something that's um, taller, go find a taller typeface. Keep the integrity of your of your fonts going. This is a baseline shift. Last semester I had a couple students that always baseline shift everything. The whole idea of this is like you have um, 10 squared. So um, you know you can you can also hit superscript for this, which makes it kind of a 10 squared. Um, but the idea is that you're just kind of shifting it up a little bit um, off that regular baseline. So that's what the baseline shift is. Um, so just just something that you can uh, you can know of know about. And then you have your paragraph window, which here are those options. Right now, I have everything left justified, but there is a center justified. Um, be cautious of this. Don't use it for large paragraphs. Um, small areas is fine. Right justifies, uh, justified, um, so it's aligned to the right. I don't recommend that. Um, very few times have I ever used that. And then if you're gonna fully justify, which means it's justified on the left and the right, you just wanna use this left one here. So this one centers the bottom line and this one right justifies that one. Um, and we read left to right, top to bottom. So if you're gonna use one of these justifieds, then just use this justify um, with the left here. And then um, also down below, this is um, indenting. So you can indent the whole thing. Um, you can indent the right side, which I rarely ever use. Um, these are just indenting the first lines, which is kind of weird. I don't usually use that either. Um, and this is space before. So these are some that I do use. So space before, and this is space after. Um, so whether you want the space kind of after your paragraph or a space before. Right now I set it to both. 
um, but you don't have to do both. You can just do one. So I can just increase that space before. So now it's separated those paragraphs a little bit more. And we'll get into some of these other things um, a little bit later. Um, also, there is an all caps. Beware of this. I always tell people all caps is like yelling at people. Um, so you just want to make sure that you don't all caps like an entire paragraph. Um, a small header is fine. Um, so on your character window, there's an all caps. There's also a small caps option. You have to highlight it. Um, so if I do a small caps, they're just smaller. But if you do small caps, don't capitalize. Like that's kind of annoying um, how large that N was. So you wouldn't want to capitalize um, and do small caps. So one or the other. Uh, so I'll go back to all, all caps there. Um, so that's what the all caps is. Um, you don't have to retype it in all caps. You can just come here and say all caps. Um, okay, so let's talk about, um, uh, we did paragraph space before, space after. Um, one of the other things that I wanna bring to your attention, and I really want you to get this, um, I'm a stickler on hyphenations. You wanna make sure you deselect hyphenate, and that's in the paragraphs window. So you have to select everything, and you have to deselect hyphenate, um, and that's just gonna help um, that's just going to help so that it looks more professional. Um, you want to make sure that you do not have hyphenations on any of your work. Okay, and then type, um, one of the things that we're going to talk about is um, going under object, and I have the box selected, so text frame options, and under text frame options, you find a few things here. This is where you can change your columns. So I can change this to two and nothing changed and that's because I don't have preview selected. So if I select preview, then you can see that um, it changed it to two columns. Your gutter is the space between. So I can increase that gutter size a little bit um, to make them feel a little bit more separated. You would not want them this close because that doesn't feel like they're even separated at all. Um, the other thing that's in here is this align top and um, you, not for this, um, I wouldn't change this to center, but there are a lot of times where I would change it to center. So for example, this hello, um, I might change this to a center and I can change it here that says align center. If I click inside here, I can align it to the center um, and I can do it here where it aligns it or I can go to object, um, text frame options, align center, and then you can see it aligns it. Um, and if it doesn't align it, sometimes you might have um, an extra um, like space or something in here. Um, and so it may not align it. And so just make sure you delete that space and then it will align it to the center. Um, so that's one thing that I would use the Align Center for. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, text frame options, columns, vertical justification. Um, so we talked about that. That's the um, center, left justify and all that. Um, okay, character style, paragraph styles, apply to, um, so, if, let's say that I wanted to bold um, my title, I would wanna make sure that the punctuation is also bolded. Um, that's really important that you keep those the same um, just so it doesn't stand out um, too much. So I'm gonna talk about styles just for a, sec um, a second here. We're gonna go to window styles and there's character styles and paragraph styles and they're different. And I want you to notice that the P is paragraph and the paragraph styles has like these pages next to it. So they're different. You have a character style and a character. So both have an A, but the style has these little pages and the paragraph style has the little pages. So these are styles that are applied to the, the character and paragraph. And these are actual styles that you're gonna make. So 
and how you know which one of these you need to use is by what is it that you're trying to at, make a style for. So if I were making a style just for bolding, well, bolding is found just in the character. Um, so you can see that bold is just part of a character style. Um, and so I would be making a character style for it. So if I click on the character style and I highlight this text, and I say new character style, and then um, I'm just gonna call this bold um, bold header. So I'm gonna say, okay, and I'm gonna apply style to the selection. So what I have highlighted, I'm gonna apply it, and I'm gonna say, okay. And that's important because if I didn't hit apply style, I'll show you on the next one, I won't do it that way. Then you have to click on that so it applies it. So let's say that I came over here and this is my next header. I can just click on that and it's gonna change it to that exact same style. Um, so this saves you a lot of time. Um, so I don't have to go in and try and bold and remember how did I set that style. Um, so that's what the character style is. And a paragraph style is when you have something that's got paragraph style attributes. So um, for example, I have a space after applied to this. Um, so I would definitely, um, I'm going to just decrease that a little bit. Um, so I'm going to have a style. Um, I have a style that's a paragraph style. So I would want to make a paragraph style for this text. So if I go to paragraph style, I'm going to say new style, and I'm just going to call this a body text. And... I'm not going to apply it this time. I'm going to show you why. So you can see that it didn't apply it. So I have to click it now with that highlighted. And then if I want to apply this text, I would just highlight it and apply it. And because I changed it to my space after was a little smaller, it's changing it. So um, why these are important? Well, there's a few reasons, but it saves a lot of time. Also, let's say that I wanted to go back and change my headers to be a color. I can just double click this header, bold header, and I can come over here to character color and I can just change it. And if I click preview, it's gonna show me. And I just say okay, and it just changed all of them at one time because you're changing a style. Um, so that's really important. And same thing with the body text. Um, maybe I get to the end and I realize, well, um, let me do that real quick. Okay, so maybe you get to the end and you realize my font's too big, so I'm going to need to um, change it, change my font size. So I'm going to come in here to formats and I'm going to change it to 9.8 because I just need it to come up just a little bit and maybe I change my letting a little bit and I say okay so now it's gonna change um, it's gonna change all of that um, to be that same style and the little plus here means that something's wrong um, something went wrong I don't know what that is um, one of the things you can use the eyedropper tool for is you could eyedropper a font and it just changed it so now it's that little plus is gone. So you wanna make sure that you're not changing stuff over here. Like I don't wanna select this and change the font or anything else. I wanna make sure that I'm changing it from the style itself. So if I wanna change a font, I need to change the font um, over here. So I need to go in and say, okay, never mind. I wanna use this font now. So it's gonna change everything that had that style applied to it. So you're always gonna change it over here. Um, so that is the basics on styles. And really these just take a little bit of time, um, just some practice on styles. And we're gonna do some, um, we're gonna definitely do some use of uh, styles. So let's say that I had some a little bit of um, type here, but then I want to add this continues over here. So I can make another text box on this page, and you'll notice that there's a little red plus here, and that's because that means that there's more um, there's more type that I'm not showing. So I either need to make my box bigger or I need to ex thread this to another box. So I'm going to click the plus and look at what it does. 
And then I'm just gonna come down here and click on that box. And now it just continued it. So if I go to, um, I think it's under extras. Yeah, view extras, show text threads. It's gonna show you this is threaded to this text box. So that's how you thread from um, one box to another. And if I were to expand this, it's just gonna pull the text up. But when I add more text, then it's gonna go ahead and continue it onto this next one. Okay, and then I already showed you how to place an image. So file, place, or you can just drag it onto here. And in the links panel, it's gonna show you that there's an image. And the reason that it's really important to um, kind of keep your stuff together is because if I, okay, let me make a, let me just uh, go ahead and save this document. Um, Adams N, so underscore, so this is last name, first initial, underscore, underscore, this is InDesign class, underscore, and we'll just call this, um, well, it's layout, it's kind of a layout demo. So I'm gonna say save, okay. So let's say that um, I make a new folder out here and I call this the same thing. Um, this is a uh, layout, I'll probably call it InDesign layout, but let's just say I move this into that folder, okay? So when I go back to my links, look at what happens. It gives me this red question mark because now I moved my image and it's no longer linked to this document. It does not like that. So, and there's a red question mark here. So you can't print this because this will come out um, really poorly because the image is no longer linked. So you have to make sure that it's, it's linked. So it's really a good idea to make your folder first. And I can't even move this folder in or this file into the folder because I have this open. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And then I'm gonna, um, put this InDesign file in here and I'm gonna say support. So these are my support files and I'm gonna move the image of the puppy. Usually I don't leave the names. I would just call this puppy or Dalmatian or whatever I want. Um, and it's gonna tell me that it's missing and that's because I changed the name of it. So if now I come down to this bottom in the links panel, I come down to the link, it says relink. So I'm gonna click relink and it found my folder. I'm gonna click support the puppy and say open and now it's linked again. So the red question mark's gone. So you wanna make sure that you don't move your stuff around and if you throw it in the trash, it's gonna be a problem. So you really wanna make sure that you're making a folder um, just from the beginning for all of your stuff. So whatever it might be, if this is called assignment one, then you just wanna make sure that you've got assignment one on there. Okay, and I talked about all of this. You can rotate, so if I wanted to rotate this, I can just hover over the edge and you could see the little percentage. If I hold shift, it rotates in 45 degree increments. Um, so that's kind of handy. Um, if you let go of shift, you can really rotate it anywhere. Um, I can also just make this larger, smaller, whatever. If I wanna make a square, um, I would just click, so if I hold nothing, I can make whatever shape I want. If I hold shift, it keeps it in a square format. Um, you just have to keep holding that down until you let go. Um, so this is the basic um, overview of InDesign, and of course we're gonna keep exploring it, um, but that's just kind of the basic layout. So the more you use it, the easier it's gonna get. A lot of people are very intimidated by InDesign, and I understand it's just because it's an unknown. Um, so the more you use it, the better you will get, I promise. And that's all for um, this basic page layout in InDesign. Hope this was helpful.